This is Joe from, I guess, Group Chernobyl. Um, I want to give you guys a quick tutorial on how to set up your OBD2 sensor if you guys are having issues with that. Uh, this is also going to serve as documentation on how our group set up our OBD2 sensor. So first thing you're going to want to do is open up your application. Actually, for this tutorial, it's only going to be on Torque Pro because that's all I have downloaded and paid for. So go ahead and open up Torque. Um, you see some flashing icons on the top. That's basically telling you you're trying to connect. Um, right now, I don't have my car running, um, so it's not going to be connected. So it's going to give an error for that. But when you do have it connected, once you get everything set up, it should have solid lights all across the top. And if you pull down on your pull down menu, it'll actually tell you um, that it's it's actually it'll say torque is connected and logging data. Okay, so right now it's it's idle just because it doesn't have an OBD two sensor connected. Um, Okay, so first thing you want to do is go into your settings, uh, set up a vehicle profile. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, so let's say I was creating a new one. Just kind of throw in whatever information you know off your car. Uh, this is just useful for really just keeping track of your cars in our, our sense. Um, anything else, you know, you could use it to track your fuel economy in car if you chose to do that. Totally out of the scope of this video, though. Um, all right, so once you get your vehicle profile set up, you're going to go to settings and you're going to want to go to scroll to the uh, option that says OBD2 adapter settings. Okay, uh, you're going to want to choose your connection type. I, I chose to connect to my uh, my ODB, ODB2 uh, connector uh, using Bluetooth. Uh, you can do Wi-Fi also, but that requires, you know, putting your, your IP address for your actual sensor if it supports Wi-Fi. Uh, and you know, Bluetooth is a lot more simpler, so I went with that. Uh, next, you're going to want to choose your Bluetooth device. Um, just look for one that says OBD2, something similar to that line, those lines. Uh, kind of use some common sense, you know. Don't, don't be trying to choose like your speaker or something, you know, you guys are smart. Alright, I chose to do faster communication on this top box right here. Uh, basically, if your phone supports it and your sensor supports it, it'll try to pull uh, information from that sensor a little bit quicker, so you get a, bit, a little bit more you know accurate readings. It's not going to work for every phone. It's not going to work for every sensor, but might as well have it checked. If it works, if it's faster, it's faster. If not, you know, just pull it. Whatever you can pull at. Let's see if there's anything else in here. Uh, I also chose to hide unsupported sensors. It's going to clean up your data a lot, um, so you're not you know having uh, columns. In your CSV file uh, later on, that they're just blank the entire way. Um, okay, so next thing you're gonna want to do is go to data logging and upload. Uh, first thing is logging preferences on top. This is where you're gonna select what you want to log uh, to the actual file. So if you click that, um, these are the ones I have set up right now. Uh, obviously, if you your group's gonna be able to decide what what you guys actually want to log. By doing it this way, you're only logging these specific things rather than logging every sensor on your vehicle. Uh, that's actually good for two reasons. One is you're, it's going to clean up your, your, you know, your file at the end of, end of uh, data collection. So it's going to be a little less you know, uh, strenuous on the eyes when you're reading everything. Uh, second is actually going to speed up how fast your OBD2 sensor can pull information from your car. Okay, Because so, the more sensors you have set up, uh, basically, the slower it can actually pull each thing because it's trying to get all this information at the same time and it can only handle so much data output. So, try to kind of like keep this to the minimum. You'll get a little bit, you know, faster pull rates and therefore better accuracy. Okay, so if you do want to uh, choose a new one, you would go to the top right here, more, and select what to log. Now, this is going to be a list of all the sensors um, that, o that Torque uh, has supported right now. Um, you know, obviously just go through this, see what you want. Biggest ones that you can probably need is, you know, engine RPM right here. And you should be able to find fuel speed. Or fuel speed. Uh, car speed. Somewhere down here. Whatever. You guys can look for it. Um, yeah, so that's going to be what you're actually logging. Now, synchronous logging. Uh, use this if you wanted to see how fast your data is getting pulled at. Uh, if you have that checked, it's only going to log every time uh, there's a complete sweep of the sensors. So I kind of just use this to see how fast our, you know, our, my car and our sensor was reading data. 
Uh, and it, I came and found out it's reading data about once every second. So after I did that, unclicked that, uh, I went to file log interval. Actually, I got to change this back, but you're going to want to go to, you know, whatever you feel is comfortable. So I, I chose one second. Now you're going to start, obviously, log when Torque is started. So it starts recording data as soon as you get in your car and turn everything on, it's connected. Um, for automatically log GPS, you might want to uh, uncheck that because logging GPS is going to slow down your pull rate. Uh, once again, so if you if you uncheck that, it's going to be a little bit more accurate data. Uh, I have G sensors um, getting recorded. Uh, as it says, it doesn't slow down data retrieval, so kind of just leave that on. Uh, make sure you do have rotate log files checked. This makes sure that every time you get a new log, it's Every time you record a new log, it's recording it as a new name, so you're not overriding the same one over and over again. Um, and I believe there's only one more setting you need to do down here. Make sure your automatic trip recording is on. And also, make sure you have this unchecked, the discard trips less than half a mile. For a lot of your guys' runs, you're only going to run maybe like a quarter of a mile total. So make sure you have that uh, unchecked, just so you actually have that data recorded. Um, and that should be it for a minute here. Okay, so once you actually have all your um, all your data logged, you're gonna want to go into your your phone SD card, wherever that is. If it's an internal one or an external SD card, uh, I have a shortcut for it right here. But so this, these are all your track logs, and it's gonna name them, you know, by a date, time, all the way to the seconds. So once you get that, it's gonna be a CSV file, which is openable or be able to be opened in Excel and also in MATLAB. So for me, I just chose I was choosing, um, you know, Bluetooth to share it. Uh, but you can do tons of different things. It kind of depends on your phone what you want to do. Uh, you can send an email. I've done that also before. But yeah, that's basically going to be your log file. Once you get that CSV file onto your computer, uh, do your regular import into MATLAB and kind of uh, choose which columns you want. You know, you want to import. So I'll leave that up to you guys to choose. So, you know, that should be it. Uh, hopefully, this was kind of a help for you guys. Um, yeah, and good luck on your projects. Bye.